Hello friends, welcome to Rapid Flow. My name is Eric and I'm making a video today to show you what the Rupert Neve Stereo DI Box sounds like for tracking synths and drum machines into your computer. So uh, full disclosure, this is a collab with uh, Rupert Neve Designs, but they don't get to say anything about how this video is made. They don't get to see it in advance. I got it off of their uh, very nice Swiss distributor. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm showing you what it sounds like so you can make up your own mind. So the way I've set this up today is that we will be able to monitor two synths coming straight off the patch bay and going into this uh, quantum converter here. So the first synth we're going to be using is, let me switch you over here, um, is this uh, Telemark, that's what you're hearing right now. This is basically a clone of a SEM by Analog Solutions. <laughs> The second synth that we're going to be using is in the corner here. It's this uh, ARP 2600 clone uh, from Behringer, which we're going to be using for short percussive basses. And the way that this has been set up is that I can just patch, uh, in this case, the Telemark or the 2600 and send it straight to the converter. So that's a 2600, that's the Telemark. And then the other sound that we have is the Rupert Neve DI box, and that's on this black cable here. So right now, that's that same synth sound in real time going into the DI box here. Uh, and we can patch, of course, the 2600. So that's the best way uh, I figured to do this. We're not using the Prism Orpheus converters today. I want it to be this like a, a real world test. And this is an interface, I think that is mid tier and it sounds really, really good. Uh, so yeah. Uh, DI box uh, straight off the um, patch bay and if we go over to the um, Ableton uh, live screen you will see there's a white channel here called quantum uh, pretty straightforward that's the interface and here's the Neve DI box so you'll be able to see which of the two you're hearing I'm going to switch off my mic now and um, just punch in uh, either the DI box or the interface so you can uh, make up your mind for yourself here we go going to switch off the drums so you can hear this all uh, a bit clearer. Hey everyone, uh, while I was editing this video I realized that I forgot to record a drum computer <laughs> through the DI box. So what I have on screen here, let me take you here, is uh, I have the Quantum still on the right and the Neve uh, on the left. So now let me show you, I'm going to start without that bass line uh, and I'm just going to show you what these uh, recordings sound like and we're going to start with the Quantum. As you can see here, that's the channel we're monitoring, uh, the levels are matched. So this is something that I've noticed before, actually, um, when I've been doing some uh, converter tests with some really high-end uh, RME converters that I was testing in my studio for a while. When things pile up in the low end, uh, typically when you have a tom uh, still kind of sounding out with a long delay, uh, decay and the kick drum or a kick drum with some basses and they're overlapping in some places, that's, I think, when you really hear a difference between um, like a high quality sort of um, maybe transformer based input chain or just something that's super well designed. To my ears, when the tom comes in, um, the groove becomes less coherent and kind of wobbly when it's just going straight to the converter. And the Neve has a really interesting way of kind of gluing all that together in a way that to me it just sounds 
it has a better feel for the groove and the low end feels more tight and it would mean in, in my case I would have to work less on it to get it to really function together because as I'm tracking it it's uh, it's already sounding really good so let me show it to you let me bring in maybe a bit more complexity in the low end of the sound that we're tracking uh, so I'm just going to switch off that bass again we're just going to be working with the drum computer and I'm going to be adding some more toms um, just to see if that exacerbates this Yeah, so really, really interesting, I think. Uh, would you not be able to make a track tracking through a converter like the Quantum? Absolutely not. Definitely, you can get it to work, no problem. I think the having something like a Neve DI box or something, it's just like it adds another flavor. It's a total luxury and you know these little percentages eventually add up so back to the main video we've done the drum computer bit now uh yeah i hope it was interesting and uh, let's close this out so there you go that is what those uh that conversion sounds like um i think the the big question it's it's really up to you like you know is this worth it does it make enough of a difference um for me personally because i make sample packs uh, for rapid flow it absolutely makes worth it uh, is worth it i feel like the di box just gives it a little bit more life you can hear this transformer sort of harmonics being generated uh, it puts the sound a little bit more up front um, and when I met the wonderful people from Rupert Neve Designs at Superbooth, um, they were interested in this idea to see how this could help for electronic music production, because most of the people use this DI box for bass, bass guitars. Uh, they said not many people had actually even done videos on it for synths and drum machines. So what I went ahead then and did once I had this in my studio is to make a sample pack based off of the um, um, System 100 clone that's coming into picture here. It's a it's a Behringer clone uh, of the very famous Roland System 100 um, bass, which uh, Hannes Bieger actually once mentioned uh, somewhere in an interview, I think, and he said it's really good for short, punchy basses, and yeah, he was absolutely right. So what I did, I'm going to switch off the live inputs and uh, play for you the sample instrument that I've created uh, based on that synth through the Neve DI box. Here we go. So that's the sound going only through the DI box and this is it going through the DI box and my tape machine that's yeah, in the corner over there. So as you can hear, there's variations. Uh, there's uh, either like a closed synth filter that I recorded through the Neve and then once more through the tape machine, or there's a fully open filter that I recorded through the uh, Neve and then through the tape machine. I just wanted to show you the effort that went into this madness. I literally sampled this synthesizer note by note uh, so that you really get the character captured of the synth going through great outboard. Then I processed it with external outboard to get this really punchy upfront clean bass sound that'll just cut through your mix while giving you that analog vibe. So yes, uh, the DI box uh, being put to good use already here. This sample pack will be available soon on rapidflow.shop if you're interested in it. And um, yeah, this basically is what I wanted to show you, what you can do with this uh, cool DI box, uh, what I've put it to use for uh, to uh, get an interesting sound into the computer and then sample that and yeah, make it available to you so you can use it in your productions. 
Uh, so I'm going to jam with this a bit more, have some fun. And uh, yeah, I hope this video has been entertaining and it's uh, helped you make up your mind if you want to try out something like the Rupert Neve DI box to get just that little bit more mojo into your productions. I personally love using it. I think it's amazing. And uh, yeah, curious what you think about it. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And uh, please uh, consider liking and subscribing. I'm going to put an affiliate link uh, below to uh, Toman. So if you want to support the channel, you can grab the DI box through that link. Uh, it really helps. Super appreciate it. And uh, I will see you on the next video. All right. Have a good one. Bye bye.